Welcome back to Alyssa's Movie Takes. Today I'm going to be looking at the new Netflix show, Inventing Anna, which is generating a lot of buzz and has risen to number one. Now let me just start off by saying this show is bingeable. It creates a lot of intrigue and it has uh, some really good acting in it. Anna is played by Ozark's Julia Garner and Vivian Kent is played by Anna Chlomsky. But overall, this project starts to fall flat for me as we get into the final stretch. And why is that? It's because you can't really root for Vivian, the journalist who's desperate to get the story, or Anna, this completely selfish woman who's able to fool everyone she ever knows. I've called this review Inventing Anna and the Tenth Commandment. The reason I dislike both of these women boils down to that Tenth Commandment. You know, that's the one we tend to whitewash. It's the one about coveting. It's a long list of things that God gives in one of the longest commandments. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When you covet something, you long for something that somebody else has. You pine for it. So what's wrong if we miss this one commandment? Well, just ask Anna Delvey and everyone she hurts. The show unfolds Anna's story through Vivian's eyes. Vivian is able to land an interview with Anna once she's in jail. So the show starts off with Anna in jail and you don't know much about her. You think she might be a German heiress. She also might just be complete con. Um, and the mystery is kept up because we learn about Anna as Vivian learns the facts and in interviews person by person who Anna encountered and most likely swindled out of a whole bunch of money. Anna is the queen of the social media age, making everything about her manner and her appearance and her Instagram filters. And in order to keep up this mirage that she is as wealthy as she says, she has to do shadier and shadier things. This is our first warning of why coveting is such a slippery slope. When you get obsessed with what other people have, you will do anything in your power to get it, just like Anna. Anna steals money. She steals hotel stays. She starts to lie to others. She even lies to herself, convincing herself that she is this VIP she's made herself out to be. For example, one minute Anna is coveting this expensive vacation in Morocco. The next minute, she's ruined her friend Del's life putting her in danger of losing her job, going to jail, and burying her under a mountain of debt. Coveting starts in the mind, but it quickly escalates so that you lose your moral compass and you don't care what you do. And if there is ever anyone who has no moral compass, it is Anna Delvey. She hurts everyone she knows, and nowhere is that more poignant with how her own family reacts to when she gets caught and ends up in jail. We come to find out that they live in Germany, um, but they're not going to come to the States for her because they know her game. They've been burned by it for too long and they just can't keep playing that game with her because they keep losing and she makes no effort to change. And here's one area where I couldn't really root for Vivian either. She starts out as a journalist just trying to chase the story. There's nothing wrong with that. And she even does it in a way where she might not follow every single rule to the T or protocol to the T, but she's doing it to get the story and you respect her for it. I start to lose respect for her because instead of telling the story with the facts as it comes out, she completely sides with Anna. Anna gaslights her and she can no longer tell the fact from the fiction. She really thinks that Anna is a victim in this. It looks, it looks like it from the way that it's told. Maybe that's not true in how it came out in the actual story, but in the series, Vivian is sold to Anna's story hook, line, and sinker. And nowhere is this clearer than when Vivian goes to see Anna's parents. They explain to her their reasons for not showing up for her, their daughter, that she's been like this for a long time, that she's made no effort to change, and they're not going to play into that game anymore. And instead of kind of understanding where they're coming from because of the long list of people that Anna has burned and the boxes and boxes and boxes of discovery that all represent all the people that she's hurt and stolen from, Anna storms off, I mean, Vivian storms off in a rage because she can't believe the injustice of these parents for not showing up for their daughter. And just a side note, the other part that made me turn off to this character, Vivian, was when she's looking at an ultrasound of her baby that she's pregnant with, and they tell her she's gonna have a girl, and she curses and she curses and she curses. And I just thought, I have no empathy for you as a character. She too has this discontent that makes her step on other people, including her own husband, and put work over her family. 
often. The last thing Inventing Anna shows about the dangers of coveting is that those who always want more and justify the means to get it end up isolated and alone. One poignant scene is where Anna, who is about to face the music for her misdeeds, rides the subway all alone. Not one of her friends is there, and in order to eat, she has to scrounge for food from fast food bags left by other subway riders. Every time Anna cons someone, she makes a new enemy, first because she steals from them, and second because she humiliates them. She can only ever see herself and how it advantages her in a situation. Yet even here, when she hits rock bottom, Anna refuses to yield her need to be treated like the German heiress that she isn't. The layers of the show are interesting, but because the person underneath all those layers, Anna, is a narcissist through and through, this is a show that I'll watch once, but I probably won't revisit. If you want a better look at the rise and fall of a con man that also works as a fair warning against coveting, go back and watch Catch Me If You Can. The hunted and the hunter story arcs are better here. They're played by Frank the Hunted, you know, that's uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character, and the hunter, Carl Hanratty, played by Tom Hanks, and it just works really well as a movie that stands the test of time, in part because it delivers a believable redemption arc for Frank's character, and you could even argue Carl's character too, and it does so in the quarter of the time as Inventing Anna. So that's my take on Inventing Anna. Did you binge it? Did you like it? Did you find the female protagonists as annoying as I did? Let me know in the comments below, and if you like what you see, please subscribe and I will talk to you soon.